Uh, what's going on people, it's your man the YB, back once again, big shout out to my doggy SJ Life and Science for coming through and boosting up the coin, so, we got another update for you man, right now, I guess you could consider it a leak, you best believe it's one that no one's seen it before, Dimitri Bivol's team have finally filed a protest with all four sanctioning bodies, beg, trying to beg their way to a belt, you got punched up man, I'm sick of hearing from this guy. I'm sick of hearing from this guy. And all that, all that kind of, oh, I'm humble. Oh. Humbleness, yeah. Almost by definition, in my experience, cannot be defined by when you're on and winning. Everyone's humble, don't they? Like, there are some, <laughs> there are some goof troops who can be humble when they're winning still. but <laughs> Or who aren't humble, sorry, when they're winning. But in the, for, for the most part, look at AJ. AJ, oh, stay humble, bro. Stay humble, bro. He takes a loss. He's talking about Big Meech, how he don't even watch boxing. See what I mean? It's irrelevant. So all this fake, humble Soviet rubbish that they've been pushing us is cap. I don't want to hear about, oh, well, I beat. It's not him. It's his manager. Yeah? Because Bivol had an interview. I could get the clip for you, but I'm lazy, so take my word for it. Bivol had an interview and said, yeah, well, uh, people are saying this, people are saying that. And the guy said to him, have you watched the fight yet? He said, no. The guy said, did you count the rounds? He said, no, obviously. No fighter can count rounds on who's winning what when you're in the middle of the fade. So he hadn't watched it, he weren't counting round, but yet, he's coming out there talking rubbish. And even his manager, which we've got the clip here, leaked clip for you, man. Oh, depends on uh, better bees, uh, wishes. Does he want this fight? Yeah, it'll be protested on Monday. You know, I'm talking to Eddie, I'm talking to everybody. We're going to file a protest. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, we all know that doesn't work, but at least the judge has to at least have some kind of responsibility in his, you know, in his mind for what he did. It would be good if they can sit him down and have him count the punches landed. I want to see where he saw his 116-112 card and how did he count the landed punches from Better Beef on Bivol. Listen man, let me tell you man something as well right now. A lot of cats here, one of my donnies, didn't watch the fight. He saw the highlights and was telling me, why be you bugging, you shilling your base, you shilling your gambling coin. Yeah? Two twos, I send him the full link to the fight. He comes back and says to me, Hey man, I watched three rounds. Bivol lost. He <laughs> running too much. <laughs> so you got. I think he would have picked. He would have picked probably Bivol at the start before the fight happened. After the highlights, he was picking Bivol. Watching three rounds of the full thing. I got no reason to lie about it. He ain't got no reason to lie about it. He loves coming. He loves being. Um, he loves to contradict what I'm saying essentially. Three rounds. He said, "Listen, I turned it off, man. He running too much. <laughs> That's the bar. You can't win an undisputed championship running." And then losing the last three rounds, clinging on and running. He was running. He was running. Yeah, that's what he was doing. So protest for what? And the ones, the whole 112, 116 shtick I keep hearing. And I'm t it's all the no power having dudes. Shakur Sleepvinson. Andre Ward. Paulie Malinaji. Paulie no power Malinaji. Chris Algieri. All these cats, they're the ones, oh, it's a big trouble. You have to chill in their base. Because they know, Andre Ward knows, if he was in there with Baterbiev, what's he going to do in there? He was going life and death. Kovalev wasn't Baterbiev's level. He was not. And he was in there life and death. Yes, he stuck it straight on Kovalev, but Kovalev was soft. Yeah? Some of them flurries that Bivol put on Baterbiev at the weekend, that would have been enough to break Kovalev, I believe. He, wouldn't have liked, he didn't like people fighting back at all. He expected to go in there and just walk forward and have no resistance. He wasn't actually... Like, he wasn't about it. Like, but Peterbiev, yeah. Them times, Bivol thought there was something sweet. And I ain't gonna lie. Given the new age boxing... Or the, the new age boxing culture, I was expecting Peterbiev to take a few licks back and be like, ooh, seriously. When I was watching the fight, yeah, every time Bivol stuck it on him, I thought, ooh, the table's about to turn. Because that's what we've been bred to expect now. Yeah? We've been bred to expect people like Canelo, who are on top fighters, bash everyone up. The minute they get some adversity... Oh, I don't like this, actually. I don't like fighting so much now I'm being hit back. And it, it, like Bivol versus Canelo, for example. We've been conditioned to believe now, the minute someone takes some fire, they're out of there. Guess what happens with Baterbiev? Bivol looks great coming forward. Every time Bivol's tried to fight his way out of this problem he had called Baterbiev, Baterbiev would, <laughs> Baterbiev would up the stakes again. Yeah? He would up the stakes again and put Bivol back in his box for the next two and a half rounds. That's what happened, folks. You can't win a, win a fight, yeah, when every time you tried to speak up, which was seldom anyway, probably three or four times, Bivol, you thought, oh, he's having a go now. 
Biterbi had put him straight back in his box and had him running. If Bivol did a 30 second stint, the next two and a half minutes, or Bivol would do a 30 second stint, then Biterbi would lay it on thick, and then Bivol would be out of there, he don't want no more. Of that conversation, he's back on his bike. That tells you who won the fight, man. That's the bottom line there. Yeah, and Baturbiev would have punched Andre Ward up. Andre Ward might have, Andre Ward might have come come in thinking it was sweet, like the Kovalev fight. He might have done that because the Kovalev fight would have gone to his head. He'd have thought, "Oh, there's something sweet now. I can just I'm all of a sudden a power puncher." He'd have come in there with them same tricks he was doing with <laughs> with Kovalev, washed up. No, not, Kovalev wasn't washed up. He's no good. He's not Baturbiev though. Yeah, Ward would have come in there doing all that slappy rubbish, and Baturbiev would have been like licking his lips, man, licking his lips. And Ward would have got, I think Ward would have got, if Ward had, a, the only way Ward survives that fight is because I gave him credit for his, his running skills, essentially. He would have had to have got on his Shakur Sleepvinson in that fight. That's the only way he survived. If he, if he went in there thinking it was Kovalev, um, the trilogy, if Andre Ward went in there with Baturbia thinking it's Sergei, Ko, Sergei Kovalev 3, he'd have been out of there. That's my base case. And if I'm wrong, Ward got so much to say these days and... Shout out to my Donny H Money because he pointed out that he said, "Listen, Andre Ward. I think I think he might even be younger than um, Baturbiev. Andre Ward, box uh, oh, age. Sorry, he might even be younger, forty. So they're about the same age. Then they're the same age, and you're fresher as such, right? Ward's fresh. He retired seven years ago. Get your ass back in there, man. He was happy to come back for Canella." You thought you see there's something sweet with Canella. So get your ass in there, Paterbiev, and show us how... Mate, listen, maybe Ward can go in there and do something. And what I like about Paterbiev is he ain't like Canella who duck... Or like Triple... Triple G did duck. I'm going to call it Spare Spade. Triple G fought a bunch of bums at 160. Fact. And then... Really, Triple G's only fight he's ever had was Canelo, and he lost twice out of three. Fact. He won the first one, for sure. But the next two, he lost. So, like, who's... Name me another Hall of Famer. Even, name me another even close to Hall of Famer. You have to go back to kind of... What's his name? You have to go back to David Lemieux. Like, he ain't even close. <laughs> oh, come on. Come <laughs> on, David Lemieux. So, Triple G, yeah. Triple G was fighting pure bums at 160. And Ward was at 168. And Triple G didn't do nothing. So, Ward's used to these type of cats like... Kovalev, who's a pure on-top bully. And Triple G, who don't want the smoke. But Turbo would give you the smoke. Proper. Because Baturbi haven't ducked no one. In fact, Baturbi was slagging off Bivol years ago saying... I want to fight, and he don't want to fight. He want to fight. Even with a bum knee, he's jumping in there five months later, unparalleled. Who, who, who has a knee operation and is back in the ring five months to the day afterwards? Unparalleled. He with it, and he's 40 your age. You ducked off at 33. Fair play to you. But let's call a spade a spade here. There's, there's leagues to this, even if you think Bivol won. He's 33 years old. Fresh, the peak of his life. No injuries, no surgery. If you have people, let me tell you for free, and that's why I don't do the point system. If you have a draw, let's call the fight a draw. If you have a draw with a 40-year-old man with a bum knee, you're lost. Better yet, if you have a draw with a 40-year-old man with a bum knee and get punched up, almost stopped, in that round 11, he was about to be stopped. Let's call it a spade a spade. Or he was, you could see it, we were on the stage there. And another three rounds, if it was a 15 round fight, he'd have got stopped. Yeah, it would have got, he would have got stopped. So, oh, come on now. Come on. Come on. Anyway, back to the point. Bivol's team, let's read out the statement. Let's read out the thing they've put out. Dimitri Bivol's team has filed a protest with all four sanctioning bodies, seeking an immediate rematch with Baturbiev. The basis for the appeal is the belief that the majority of viewers had Bivol. What the fuck? The majority of the winners are psyoped, the psyoped, unwashed, cucked masses who have been listening to that moody Sky Sports slash The Zone commentary. That's what they was on. Yeah, round, there was some round, round 10, 11, or 12. I'm sure it was 11. Skies and I, I, I watched the fight back on Turkey's channel. It's weird because them goofies, yeah, the Sky Cats, they didn't stop talk every round. The minute break, they'd be running their mouth for a minute. Anyway, I watched the Turkey upload, and all of a sudden, at the end of round eleven, yeah, the commentary just goes blank, and you hear everyone moving around or talking in the. You hear the crowd buzz, and I thought when I was watching the fight live, there was no crowd buzz. That man was. Putting their two pennies in there. So where did that go? 
because they realised how silly it was. I'm sure it was round 11. After round 11, they came out and said, oh, that was a solid, another solid round for Bivol. I'm thinking, whoa, that's mad. I didn't, n n n seriously, for 12 rounds, I didn't hear one good thing about Baturbiev. Even, I heard one point as well, when Baturbiev was chasing him around the ring, they said, oh, it's just, it's just, the way they'd spin it was, rather than saying, wow, Baturbiev's 14, got a bum knee, and he's chased this dude looking to fight. Rather than say the truth, they'd spin it and say, wow, it's amazing how Bivol's so elusive with his footwork. You see that side up there, yeah? So the unwashed, cucked masses hear that and think, oh, he's running. He's running. I think Bivol would be a great fencer. That's the kind of start. He's in and out, very good in and out. He can run like fencing, not fighting. So fight, people. I hate to break it to you. Go back to amateur boxing, right? That's what his best paid here. But Bivol... Amateur boxing. If that's what you're looking for, if you're looking to score rounds and all that rubbish, and even any losing, <laughs> if you want to be anal about the scoring rounds thing and not the spirit of the fight, that's what the amateurs was for, right? The amateurs is about slapping about and dancing around and slapping about some more. You're welcome to do that. It's professional ranks. We want to see who the baddest man is. And no one can watch that Bivol fight and tell me Bivol is the baddest man at 175. The game's been co opted. By dudes with no power, like Paulie Malinaji, like Chris Algieri, shilling their base. They have to believe that the, the fanny around one is the one people is the one that's winning. They have to say that because that's what that's what they could do, right? And every time Conor Ben punch Algieri up, man, he punch him up, right? Algieri's supposed to be this got punched up by a novice Conor Hen. Come on now, you may, listen. He might have been off the eggs. <laughs> he might have been off the eggs, but still, for all that boxing and running, you got punched up. So. Let's call it spare space. They tell the truth. You feel victimized and abused by power. That's why you're going against it, right? It's like if you've ever been diddled when you were younger, when someone else comes out and talks about it, you're, yeah, yeah, they're right, they're right. Not because you know they're right, but because you're shilling your base. Oh, I was touched too, so I want to get some get back through him or through her. Yeah? Same thing here. Oh, every dude I fought with power punched me up. Adrian Browner wasn't even powerful like that. He still punched Paulie Malinaji up, so he... 100%. <laughs> anyway, these guys, they irritate me. Bivol, the Bivol, Bivol himself. Because at the end of the day, yeah, you can say, well, I beat his manager or whatever else. Bivol's a grown-ass man. And I've seen it before, where fight, fighters are... At this point in their career, if Bivol had said, hey, man, chill out, I want to take this one. Right? Fighters have the final word. If, if, I'm sure Bivol has to sign somewhere. There's no way Bivol could not want something and his promoters can just decide to. I'm sure Bivol has to sign the appeal or the protest with his own name. So if he was really that humble and really wanted to take the L and push on, because it's not like it was a genuine robbery. Even if you think Bivol won, he won by a round, which by definition can't be a robbery. Yeah? And what he should be doing, which I believe he will do ultimately, but what he should be doing is looking at the glaring holes he needs to improve on. It's not like he actually won. Nine. For example, if he'd lost the Canelo fight, he could legitimately be like, oh my God, this is corruption. I need to protest this because I'm not sure what more real I could do. Right? That was a perfect boxy fight for Bivol. What more could he have done? He probably could have pushed it on in the later rounds and touched him some more, but... It, there was no glaring holes. Bivol versus Canelo, there's no glaring holes of any evidence showing that he should have only won by a round, right? That's when you protest something. When you when you watch that fight, you know, fighters know, man. Even if you've only sparred before, you know when you're surviving in there and or fighting out of necessity. Bivol fought out of necessity. The very few times he did come, he did have a go was because he thought... It's admirable. He could have just gone out sad like Caleb Plant did against Canelo and just rolled over. So it's admirable. But nonetheless, he was panic fighting. He wasn't game plan fighting. If he was game plan fighting, once or twice a round at least, every round, he'd been popping Peterbiev off and then get on his bike. He wasn't doing that. He'd pop Peterbiev one round and three rounds of running around the ring later, he might have another go. That's not, no, you can't win a fight that way. You can't win a fight that way. That's for sure. Anyway, and the majority of the... Anyway, I've talked about that. Complaint draws parallels to Lewis Holyfield 1. I haven't watched that fight, so I can't comment. I also want to get to... Whilst we're on the topic of Baturbiev and Bivol, 
I do want to talk about. Look at this here. Arta Baturbiev on Instagram today. Although I'm not a good boxer yet, I have a very good team. And I honestly believe if he'd lost, I don't think you'd have heard this. All these bars. Ah, oh, I've been robbed and this hurt the other. In fact, even after winning, look how humble Baturbiev was. Even after winning, he says, I'm not a good boxer. And more specifically, he says, I'm disappointed I didn't get the KO. Even after winning, he's looking on, he ain't satisfied with that. He's disappointed with it. Bivol's team were like, <laughs> they was geeked because they survived. What kind of low-T beater thing is that? You're geeked because you spent life and death clinging on. Doing nothing in the championship rounds against a 40 year old man with a bum leg. You're, and you're buzzing off your head. That shows you the mentality here. There's greatness. Bivot Baturbiev's mentality is greatness. Even when he's won the belts. Pretty convincingly in my opinion. Based on the, the spirit and the narrative of how the fight was going. He's still not satisfied. And like I said on after fight night. There's only going to be one man. One man will lay in his bed at night and think. Oh. Now, obviously, Bivol's giving the right talks. He's saying he's doing the protest to try and force the rematch. He's saying the right things, but there's only one man who's going to look back and say, hmm. You know what I mean? But Viterbi was licking his... He, what, what, what could go wrong for him in the rematch? He's still going to be plowing forward and putting, trying to put his hands together, throwing twice as many shots. Bivol's the one who's thinking, oh, next time I've got to throw more shots to win. Which opens me up. Because every time Bivol opened up. Baturbiev came straight back. Baturbiev was sitting back in the cut. Looking to get through. Put something through there. So now Bivol was the only. This is on Bivol now. To take more risks. Baturbiev can't take any more risks. Than he was taking. Well tell you like, I think he could have committed. I think he could have actually committed a bit more. Just started charging in. Like Zhang versus Wilder. <laughs> in them last few rounds. But obviously. It's, it's easy for me to say. But Bivol is, is sharp. Still. But Toby is still going to be on Bivol's ass in that rematch. Hunting him. Predator. Prey. That's what Baturbi versus Bivol showed you. If you know what you're watching. And you haven't been. Misexualized by the no power having crew. Yeah, of course. Salit Vincent. Andre Ward. These guys are the pinnacle of no power. They know. They go 100%. Shakur course. Salit Vincent can run and faff around for 12 rounds. And he wins. And. Oh yeah. Well, I got it in the bag. Oops. Ben Whitaker, oh, I can do it all, but I just choose to... Oops. Yeah. Oops. Anyway. There's another one here as well. Look at Jamata Davis. Jamata Davis came through. Jamata Davis blasting Arta Baturbiev in response to a comment from Baturbiev's coach, John Scully, who said Tank couldn't get into the Hall of Fame if he retired today. I agree. I hate to break it to you, Tank. Hall of Fame for what? Your headline win is a drained Ryan Garcia. That is your headline win, and it's one of them. You've got one headline win. And he wasn't even a world champion. He's never been world champion. Who've, I can't even tell you who beat. Who's Tank B? And there's been plenty of people. Devin Haney was undisputed at 135, begging for it. And on hindsight now, we all know Tank would have knocked him out. Or done, done him some serious harm. Yeah? You plumber from the bay. <laughs> Do you understand? That's what Tank would have done to Devin Haney. Haney was begging for it. Tank didn't want it. Lomachenko for the last 10 years. On your ass, You didn't want it. So actually, there should be a Hall of Fame. A bum of fame. I want to make one. Put me on, Turkey Man. Put me on, and I'll get exposed in all these boxers. We'll make a bum of fame. And the bum of fame... The Hall of the Bums fame. <laughs> How about that? Yeah? The YB will be sanctioned by Turkey's Turkulency to make the Hall of the Bums. And who goes in there is individuals who have a consistency to duck in any serious competition. And legitimately right now, if I had to pick one name who is pound for pound number one bum of the fame, it's Dan Davis. It is. He couldn't even go in there with Ryan Garcia at 140, no rehydration clauses. And don't tell me, oh, it's the A-side, it's the A-side. You scary, man. He's not like, oh, well, Tank Davis cleaned up Devin Haney as undisputed. Do you know how rare it is to get an undisputed opportunity? That's f People chew hands off for that. He was on a plate. And it's a relatively easy one with Devin. There was, he's got no power. He's never going to stop you. 
And he's chin suspect. You should have been all over that. He didn't want it. Yeah? Tank is the biggest ducker around right now. Then you've probably got Canelo number two. Who else is there? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's who there is right now. As far as big names go, the bum of fame, Tank Davis and Canelo Alvarez. Yeah, it sounds sad, really, because Carrot Top has done quite a lot, but... Benavidez, man. Fight Benavidez. What are you doing? You're in Bum of Fame now. I put him in Bum of Fame. Oops. Not my fault. I'd rather him. I think he beat people. I'd bet money. I'm telling you right now, if Carrot Top versus Benavidez got signed, I'd put money on Carrot Top. Because Benavidez can't punch. And Carrot Top will go in there, feel he can't punch, and think, okay, he's sweet. Whap, whap, with the left hook. And Benavidez will be standing there. And his chinny, Benavidez, has been down before. So... I don't know what character top's on. Nonetheless, you're in the bum of fame now. Anyway, Tank Davis responded to these claims from John Scully. He said, that big strong ass goofy that he trains, not a Hall of Fame fighter, his ass. Um, Tank, Baturbiev has beat back-to-back -back world champions. He's got a better KO ratio than you as well. And he's got to go in there with the best. There's no, I can't think of... When has Baturbiev had a pick em fight? Tank has all pick em fights. They're all bums you never heard of before. Tank Davis is scheduled to fight someone in December. Never heard of him a day in my life. A dude from the weight division below. Never heard of him once. Not even once in my life have I heard of him. And the guy before that, Frank Martin, never heard of him. What's Frank Martin done? No one knows. Yeah? Then you got Baturbiev in there with 168 pound unified champion Callan Smith. Knock his ass out. Bivol, essentially a pound for pound champion. Um, everyone he fought. It, there's no, there's no bum of the month campaigns. Even people like Canelo. Canelo, I guess you can argue at one sixty he went on a bit of a run. That's fair. That's fair at one sixty eight. Sorry, he went on a bit of a run and he fought Golovkin. So yeah, historically Canelo has a solid resume, but in terms of recency, there's a bit of a myth for him. He fell off, or he felt the power. Who did he get punched up by? A Bivol. That was it. He felt the power of Bivol and it's broken him. Bivol broke Canelo, unfortunately. Because Canelo, was, I was telling people he was going to punch you sick up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. I was wrong. Hands in the air, man. I was wrong. Usyk would have slapped Carrot Top. Usyk might have even stopped. Usyk don't stop no one, but he might have stopped Carrot Top. He's just too big. He might have stopped him if he'd wanted to. In fact, you know what? I'll tell you now. If Canelo versus Usyk was made... And I don't bet on KOs. I would bet on a KO on in that one. Because he'd just be too big. Carrot Top wouldn't get a look in edgeways. <laughs> he'd just get slapped about. <laughs> and then he'd be out of gas after seven rounds and just keep getting slapped. He'd want to get stopped. Stopped on his feet, I'd bet on. Anyway, let me know your thoughts, people. Smash the like button, subscribe, like off the bell, 100%. There's no doubt about it. Oh, finally, I will say as well, there should be a rematch. I think Baturbiev's not talking about retiring. And Baturbiev's not talking about going up to cruiserweight. So make the rematch, as I, which is from what I'm hearing from people closer to the situation. It will be made. And I'll be betting on Baturbiev again. Baturbiev for the win again is what I'll be betting. I'll tell you what will be interesting. To know what people really thought about the first fight, we'll be looking at the odds for the rematch, right? Mate, listen. If all these fans that was watching the fight believe Bivol won easy, it was like a boxing masterclass, like Eddie Hearn said, then the odds should be Bivol as a two-to-one favourite. I don't think so. But Terbiev went in the underdog in the first fight, and I believe he'll go in the favourite in the next fight. I hope not, though. It's good for me if he doesn't. If all the Bivol homosexuals come out and put their coins up, it's better for me. Cause I, I, I'm taking Baturbiev every time. I think Baturbiev will look back on that and he'll see he'll see how he can get more dangerous. Bivol, he's just got... I don't know what he's going to look at, really. He knows what he felt. Only he knows what he felt in there. Yeah, Bivol didn't suddenly start running around, folks, for nothing, right? He's never done that in his career. Yes, he's been a great boxer. But he's normally Bivol consistently in and out of range. He's not skirting the, route, skirting the ring for 12 rounds straight. That's not what he does. He's not like Eris Landilara. Or Swan and or Caleb Plant better yet. Lara's actually alright, he can he can throw hands, but Plant's just completely on the outside, or used to be at least. They're you know, completely running around the ring scared to death. I've never seen that before from Bivol. So he knows. Yeah. He wasn't doing that with Canelo. Right? Canelo can punch. He had no problem being in there with Carrot Top and standing in the middle of the ring and taking shots and countering, punching in between. 
So he felt something. He knows what he felt. I'm telling you now. You know what you felt. <laughs> you don't start running around for the first time in your career for nothing. You felt something in there. So he's going to be laying there at night thinking, he can him and his team, Eddie Hearn, can carry on writing checks that he doesn't have to cash. But Bivol knows. Bivol knows. So I won't be surprised if Bivol don't want it. I really won't. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Smash the like button, subscribe, lick off the bell, 100%. There's no doubt about this one, people. Stop it.